Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Bunsen burner. You'll notice in your lab handout, there's a picture of a Bunsen burner and it's labeled as far as the parts. That picture will always be available to you, even on the lab practical. If I ask you something about the Bunsen burner, I will have that labeled picture on the lab practical. So um, you don't have to memorize the parts, but I, the names of the parts, but I want you to know what they do. So what you can see from there is uh, with our Bunsen burner, we have at the bottom a needle valve. That needle valve is going to control how much gas goes into the Bunsen burner, and that's going to control the height of the flame. Um, I like to turn it over this way, and if I turn it right, I got righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. If I do it this way, I kind of forget which way is open and closed. So here I go righty-tighty, so that's closed, and lefty-loosey. So what I usually do with the needle valve when I go to get started with my Bunsen burner is I turn it over, I close it all the way, and then I open it like about a half a turn. And that usually is about the right height of a gas flame, but for some Bunsen burners that's too much open and the flame will be too high, and others it will be too small. So you'll get used to your own particular Bunsen burner as to how much that needs to be open. The other parts that are, are critical are the air ports, and you'll notice right here I can screw this collar area or unscrew it, and I open and close it so I get a space in there. The more open it is, the bigger the space and the more air goes in there, the more closed, the less air. And the amount of air is going to help affect the quality of our flame. Um, and those are the main main parts you want to know. So when I'm getting started, when I right when I'm getting started to use the Bunsen burner, first of all, as you can see, I make sure there's nothing flammable around the Bunsen burner. I close the the airport, I close the needle valve all the way, open it about a, a quarter to a half of a turn. I'm going to use my striker, and in labs we generally use strikers because they don't run out as quickly as matches. Um, also, you don't have like a hot match that you might end up throwing in a trash can and catching it on fire. So it's a good tool to use. You can use matches if you want, but I generally encourage people to use strikers. The problem with strikers is you've got to make it work. It's a little bit trickier than a match. Um, what you'll notice with the striker is there's right here, let's see, there's a flint, and the flint rubs against this little grate and makes a spark. You will not get a, a flame without a spark. So what a lot of people do is they take their striker and they just start going like this. And you can hear a lot of noise and you're wearing down the flint, but you're not getting a real good spark. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you put some pressure on the side of the handle here that has the flint attached. So I generally hold it, I'm holding it with my left hand and then I'm going to push, put some pressure on here with my right hand and I'm going to get a really good spark every time. And you need that good spark uh, to get your Bunsen burner lit. Do not try to light your Bunsen burner until you're good at your striker. When I go to light my Bunsen burner, I'm going to turn on the gas. And what you can see here is I'm attached to a gas spigot here. And the, the spigot has a couple, has a handle and um, the spigot, the spout here. And so what I'm going to do is the, the, gas valve, the handle can either be perpendicular to the spigot, and that's off, or it can be parallel to the spigot, and that's on. You never need to put it in between perpendicular and parallel, because that's going to give you a middle amount of gas, and you're actually going to use your, um, your, your needle valve on your Bunsen burner to regulate that height of the gas, the height of the flame. So when I go to turn on my Bunsen burner, I'm going to turn this handle parallel to the spigot. You can turn it off perpendicular. On, you could turn it off the other way, although the one I'm using right here has one in the way. So on, off, that's it. Just before I light my Bunsen burner, I just want to remind you a little bit about some of the safety precautions we've talked about. And remember that uh, stop, drop, and roll is always a good choice for putting out a fire on your body. In our lab, we have water. We have sinks at the end of every one of our benches, so there's water available there. Make sure none of, there's nothing flammable around. And if you do have a problem, call your instructor. Over. Um, notice that you know I'm going to keep my body away. I'm not going to lean 
close or over the Bunsen burner. Uh, what I notice about this flame is it really could be a better quality. First of all, it's pretty high. You know, it's it's kind of all the way up to my forehead. I'm going to use the the um, needle valve down here, and I'm going to turn that and close it some, and that's going to make my flame smaller. So if my needle valve is too open, the flame is too tall. If my needle valve is too closed, my flame is too small. I want this kind of intermediate, I don't know, maybe about a four inch, three, four inch tall flame. The other thing is the quality of the flame has some bearing on how quickly it's going to do its job. And so what we want, we want a nice hot flame. You might have noticed this in the past, but Bunsen burners, when you have a flame like this, we're trying to get this really nice cone of, uh, kind of a colored cone in the center of the flame. And I think you can see that in the video, that I have kind of a colored cone there. That cone area is the hottest part of the flame. So I want a nice cone. The problem, the problem, the way that we get a nice cone is we adjust the amount of air going in. If I have too little air going in, I'm going to close this down. You'll notice my cone goes away, and you might even notice that the flame is kind of wimpy and flickery. I can see some orange kind of there. It's not a very efficient flame, so I need to add some more air to it. And gradually, I'm going to see a nice cone there. If I add too much air, I open up my air ports too much, what happens? I'm already noticing it's getting loud. I can hear it, and if it gets loud enough, it easily blows out. As soon as it blows out, turn it off. You never want to sit with your Bunsen burner pumping gas into the room and um, with no flame on it. So I had too much air. It blew out my Bunsen burner. So here I'm going to take that air port. I'm going to close, close it down a little bit. And now I'm going to try again. I'm going to open up the the gas, and there we go. Okay, so I've got a nice flame again. So balance the needle valve and the air port to get the right height of the flame and the right quality of the flame. There's a table associated with the lab book on the Bunsen burner, and it asks you just that. What's going to happen if the needle valve is open too much or if it's closed too much? What happens if the air port is open too much or closed too much? One of my standard rules about the Bunsen burner is if you turn it on, you turn it off. And um, it doesn't mean somebody else turns it off. If you turn it on, you're going to be the one that turns it off. And there's one exception to that rule. First of all, when you turn on your Bunsen burner, I want you to use it and then turn it right off. I don't like to see people sitting there working on their microscope and their Bunsen burner's going, and they're saying, oh, I'm going to use my Bunsen burner in a couple minutes. You're much better off turning it off and then turning it back on. Um, if somebody else wants to use your Bunsen burner, you turned it on and somebody else wants to use it, you can say, um, say their, their name, Mary, do you, are you going to take over the Bunsen burner? And they say, yes, I will. They have to say that to you, that they will take it for you to be able to walk away from it. I commonly see in the lab, there'll be a, nobody standing around and there's a Bunsen burner on. And I'll say, Who's bun who turned on the Bunsen burner? And somebody says, oh, I thought you were going to use it. Well, if you didn't have that conversation, then you don't have the right to think that. Okay. So if you turn on the Bunsen burner, you need to stand near the Bunsen burner the whole time it's on and then turn it off as soon as you're done with it. Or you can hand it off to somebody by saying their name and saying, will you take the Bunsen burner? And they say, yes, I will. Okay, so good Bunsen burner safety. Good luck. I guess a final note before I, I sign off here is if you're really nervous about turning it on and off, um, you know, you can always get some help. And a lot of people do have, are, do have the jitters about fire, especially now that m most of us don't smoke anymore. In the days when everybody smoked, we were used to using matches, but um, people aren't as used to that. So if you're nervous about the fire, nervous about using the Bunsen burner, definitely ask for some help and, um, from a classmate or from your instructor. Good luck.